Hello and welcome to an exciting conversation with my girl Ella here. And uh, before we jumped on this conversation, we had a catch up session because it's been some time since Ella and I dropped in. I was on her podcast. Jeez, like, I don't know, it feels like like a while ago, like over a year ago. ago. Yeah. yeah, it's been a trip. And so it's been really beautiful to see her journey and being so young and like so in tune with herself. It's so beautiful to bear witness and. I, don't know, I feel like she's like a little sister. I was like talking to her before, like, Bish, I've been like praying for you and I'm looking and watching what you're doing and you got this. And so I'm like really excited that Ella's one of my first guests into 2021. And we were going to do this last month, but you know, there's this thing called divine timing and you're supposed to have these conversations when you're supposed to, you know? And so here we are. And I'm excited because. I, I feel like a lot of what 2021 energy is, is the year of disclosure. And I feel mm-hmm. like the biggest thing we need to disclose is our own truth and what makes us who we are. And so, you know, I know Ella here, she's really passionate about aligning and really embodying truth as well. And I think it's a, uh, it's a non-negotiable and six for business success in this day and age, more than just business success. It's, it's a non-negotiable of being human and during these times and integrity is the name of the game, like truth and integrity, they go hand in hand. And so um, I know that's been something that's been a driving force for me here um, through my work has been like, how can I be in my integrity to be of service of what I share um, of the people I bring on? Like I'm very discerning on the people I bring on. And so I'm stoked to have Ella here and uh, to talk about like issues that need to be talked about in this community that's continuing to evolve because right now there's a lot of eyes. uh, There's a lot of eyes is the best way to say it on like spirituality and the wellness community. Mm -hmm. So I would love to hear what you are seeing and feeling going into 2021 about integrity and embodying truth and the importance of that. Yeah, so I think 2020 has really been the year where, as we know, a lot of things have been coming to the surface, a lot of things that haven't necessarily been pretty for a lot of people to face within society and within ourselves. Um, And for me, I think going into 2021, like you said, truth is about really understanding your own experience. It's about really coming to terms with what are your shadows? What have been the things that you have been running away from? I think that was brought to the surface. And so moving into this year, it's about, okay, now that I know my shadows, now that I know the things coming to the surface within myself and within society, how do I actually anchor in this change? How do I actually create the changes in my every single day? And it's definitely not easy because it calls us forward to do very uncomfortable things to show up in ways that we haven't before to go on our own personal journeys and still as we're going through our own ups and downs to show up and to share that so for me it's been really about being transparent with where i've been at um, for so long you know even over the last couple of months i've realized how much i've been hiding who i really am in my journey how much i've been like oh i don't want to rock the boat i don't want to trigger people i don't want to be too much i don't want people to think about me in this way and so yeah like for me right now stepping into 2021 it's really about confronting my own shadows really looking at my own shiz and being open and honest with that journey so that people know that especially within the realm of spirituality as you know um and i'm guilty of this in the past myself too it's like love and light there are no problems just ask believe receive and things will show up and just kind of regurgitating the same you know teachings over and over again that do not consider our own individual experiences that do not consider traumas and you know different racial backgrounds and things like that and so for me it's about being really open and honest with where i'm at with like this is my journey i don't have it all figured out i'm having emotional highs emotional lows I don't know everything, but I'm committed to doing better. I'm committed to showing up and speaking where I can and just doing my best every single day, navigating my own life and navigating business at the same time. 
Um, and yeah, I think 2021 is really calling us forth to step into that role to be like, I don't have it all figured out and really just dropping that notion that we are perfect human beings. I think that's something that has really held a lot of us back from actually showing up and speaking our truth because we are afraid of getting it wrong because we think other people are somehow perfect. So it's really about dropping away those illusions and stepping into the embodiment of this is my journey. This is the stuff that I have to heal through. This is the stuff that I'm going through. I don't have it all figured out, but I'm just showing up to speak it and be it and show it every single day. Yeah. Amen. Like when I, when I'm honing into how can I be like the best leader, right? Like to me, leadership and liberation are like the big words for 2021, because I think what the gift of what 2020 was, was to reflect and to slow down to like have an honest inventory. 2020 was an honest inventory and 2021 is like, okay, so how are we going to take action? Think about it. Like Mars just went into Taurus where it was like in freaking Aries for like six months and it's like home space. And now that it's in Taurus, it's like, how do we like get our feet on the ground and take action? And I think part of that taking action with integrity is about honoring like how far you've come where you've been and sharing from that space of compassion and truth and transparency and we cannot be like again it, in in transparency and integrity they're like the same right they're of the same they're like synonyms to each other in a sense and we're allowing ourselves to be transparent of like sharing the messiness of our growth and not being confined to that damsel in distress story as well. So it's about like, yes, admitting like where we may have been wrong. Cause maybe that could be helping a client down the line of like, yo, these were my mistakes. Like I'm going to tell you about it. So you don't do it too. And if you do do it, you'll have some, your own wisdom and guidance along the way as well. But I think, the more that we allow ourselves to, to not only be in that integrity, but to have confidence and compassion for ourselves of like mistakes we've made, traumas we've endured, and coming from that space of, yes, compassion and coming from that space of just understand, like this is, this is part of the pieces as to how we're here to be of service. Yeah, absolutely. Compassion is everything. And yeah, I think like to your point there for so long, I used to be afraid of sharing those mistakes of those failures. It's like, what is that going to mean about me? I don't want people to think about me in this way. And yeah, it's really moving into the space of knowing that, like you said, the transparency and the integrity goes hand in hand. And it's part of my mission to share through my journey, because that's exactly what's going to help people who are going through similar things that I have been through. So what do you feel like of uh, the importance of like focusing on the mission more so than the ego mindset of like the destination, I should say, like how can like the importance of focusing on that journey, focusing on the mission and like the bigger picture of that legacy we're leaving behind? I think it's everything. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it's, it's what's moving me forward every single day. Because to my ego, if I were to ask my ego, how was 2020? If I were to measure up the goals that I've set out, where I want to be financially, where I want to be, like in terms of my audience and all that kind of stuff, I have failed, right? Like if I looked at what my ego would say, it's like, well, you didn't do a good enough job. And the reason why I'm still here and why I am so anchored in my truth and what I'm doing now more than ever, even though I haven't hit the goals, is because of the mission. And what I know so deeply, and I'm sure you can relate to this, is that this isn't a short-term game. This isn't a quick win. Let me make a couple of hundreds of thousands of dollars and then call it quits. Like we are here to do this for a lifetime. And I think that when people understand this, it changes everything. No matter how difficult those moments might be that things aren't working out, things are taking longer than you want them to. You might have thought that you have gone forward, you have this clarity, and then it's like, wait a minute, what am I doing again? 
Like it's the mission that moves us forward. And for me, it's very beautiful. You know, I think that for so long, I thought that my mission was confined to a couple of sentence in my bio, a couple of sentence that I regurgitate each and every time. But now I see that my mission is really being that moving and living embodiment of truth in my work that continues to evolve. And so for me, like mission versus ego destination, like having that destination in mind, I think is a good idea as a compass, as a guide, but it's not something that we should be chasing for. Like, oh, when I get there, I'm going to be successful. When I get there, then I'm going to have done my job. That doing the job is in each and every moment when you are embodied in your mission, when you are showing up, even when things aren't clear, but you know that you are meant to do this. You know that you're meant to do this for the rest of your life. So why wouldn't you be giving it your all right now? Yes. I hear you. And I think there's going to be a lot more drive with that. Cause like, I remember when I became, I got my coaching certification back in 2013. Like it was the year after I got struck by lightning and I was like, I want to help people. Like that's always been my driving force. It's like, I want to help people activate their legacy and I want to help people like use their business and allow this to be a platform to really anchor heaven on earth. And so I, I became a certified business and life coach back in 2013 And, you know, I found myself like following suit of all the big spiritual teachers names, but looking back at it all, like a lot of it doesn't feel an integrity of what success looks like because none of them were teaching the importance of knowing you first. Like it was all about, you know, the formulas and the shit like that. And of course it's important to have systems and structure is set but if you don't know you (laughs) then like what the hell are you doing you know what I mean yes and so like I mean like for for years I've been so devoted to helping people like heal their inner child helping people like do that deep ancestral healing work cultivating that like solid foundation and that was like probably the best takeaways becoming a kundalini teacher. I came a kundalini teacher the year after. And the biggest takeaway from that whole experience of becoming a teacher was tantric numerology and understanding the lower triangle and the upper triangle, because that's where I do believe these chakra systems are evolving. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm just curious to see your take on how you are seeing this space and the way we teach how it's evolving um Mm -hmm. going into really anchoring in the aquarian age the golden age of that community of that truth of that sovereignty yeah i love that question and i'm totally with you on like starting in the space about two and a half years ago just like chasing the strategy. Just tell me what to do. Like, tell me what's the five step process, formula, whatever. And yeah, what I realized, I think really just like in the beginning of 2020 was that I didn't know who I was, didn't know what I stand for. I was so afraid, didn't know who I was, what I wanted to do. Um, And so I think moving into the Aquarian age, what is so freaking beautiful is that we're no longer teaching by information. We're teaching by experience. We're teaching by embodiment. We're teaching by the failures like we had just talked about because that's what I found um, shifted in my way of learning. I started really just not being able to absorb like information. Information means nothing until it's actually embodied, until it's actually shared through an experience, until I can actually understand how someone has lived it, how I have lived it. So what I believe moving into 2021 and the beauty of the space that is evolving, you know, gradually, is I think more and more the people who are taking the same information and just regurgitating it, copy and pasting it, the same information done in different diagrams, you know, afraid of, you know, oh, am I gonna sound like this other person? Cause I like took their thing. Like that is gradually going to fall away. I believe as people start to take the teachings and actually live it and actually share from that space. I know for myself, um, it's actually really interesting because in early 2020, I was really struggling with creating content. You know, I looked at creating content as something outside of me of like, okay, what do I say now? What do I say so that people get it? What do I say so that people like me, follow me? 
Um, and what I found from myself and my journey is like these days, the content flows through and it doesn't feel like writing content. I'm just like, I'm just sharing a piece of what I'm living through right now with you. And so I think more and more that's going to happen in the ways that um, content is shared, in the ways that content is consumed. And most importantly, I think in the ways that programs are delivered, which is something that I'm really excited about in my offerings too, because like I said, full transparency, I used to be the person who's like, what did I learn? How can I regurgitate it and just package it up and like make it good out of Guilty. great intentions. I was too. I was too. <laughs> so definitely. Cause that's what I thought you were supposed to do. Me too. <laughs> oh, this is what I'm supposed to do, obviously. But I was out of like integrity with like that work. I'm totally, yeah. I totally feel you. Yeah, absolutely. Same. And you know, like I'm sure like we both come from very good intentions of I want to help people. I want to do something. But what can I do? Um, so, yeah, like now, even in my programs, you know, the way that I share practices, the way that I share, like what I call like the truths and the truth codes, like they come from my experience. They come from the way that I have interpreted it. And of course, not to say like it's all new news. I think at the end of the day, the key insights are all going to be very similar. But the way in which, you know, I know for myself when I'm creating my programs when I'm creating my certification, it's about how I have made sense of it myself and how I have integrated it on my journey and how I have supported clients through it. A great example is like NLP, right? So I'm a master NLP practitioner going to do my trainer's training in NLP and looking to launch my NLP certification. But I already know that I'm not going to teach NLP the way that it was regurgitated because there are many things within that system that do not work. And it's something that I'm like, ooh, I'm like coming out here to say it. I love NLP, but it doesn't, it doesn't touch all the facets. Like NLP is so focused on the mind, it completely disregards the importance of working with the body. You cannot just release emotions from the mind. It's got to be processed through the body. And so for me, like moving into, you know, launching Truth Alchemy, which is the methodology that I'm creating, combining Kundalini Yoga and NLP and energetics, it's really sharing through my experience and knowing that, you know, it might ruffle some feathers of like people who are like, oh, but NLP is not supposed to be taught this way or explained this way. I'm like, no, but there are different perspectives to it. And I think that's important because I know, like I have heard from many people of like doing certain NLP techniques and going like, oh, it didn't work for me. There must be something wrong with me. It's not that. It's just like there are different ways to approaching it. So that's the way that I feel is like we're moving into an age where it's no longer just information in, information out without processing, without embodiment and without discernment. I think those are all really important pieces that we integrate before we create our outputs. Okay, so this is, um, I'm actually excited you brought up NLP because this is something that's been, uh, it's been weighing heavy on my heart because I'm also seeing how there are NLP practitioners who are manipulating audiences through NLP. And so this is something that has been pretty challenging to bear witness to because I don't know too much about NLP. I mean, I've definitely been like curious about it more, but I do see the manipulative tactics that are also happening that are leeching on to the most vulnerable. Yeah. And so I would love to hear your perspective of NLP and I wanna dive in deeper. And that was like why I really wanted to bring you on uh, because it's the same thing with Kundalini, you know? And mm -hmm. we were talking about this before. Like, I'm so grateful that I'm like starting to, even, and even when I was in training and I was in the process, like I remember I met this guy at Burning Man who told me like, Yogi Bhajan isn't God, you know what I mean? And it's important for us to, like you said, take these modalities and like deliver it with that integrity and to deliver it in a way that is embodied in truth and not just like cookie cutter in that approach. So I would just love to hear more about your perspective as an NLP practitioner watching the field and this industry of manipulation also running rampant. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely challenging, right? Like as with any tool, as with any modality, the thing itself I believe is neutral. And of course it's up to how the person uses it. 
Um, yeah, I'm personally really like sick and tired and fed up of the manipulation in the coaching industry, the self-development industry of like using, you know, NLP techniques and like language patterns to make you feel not enough to amplify your pain, right? In NLP, we talk about the basis of human motivation is to move away from pain and move towards pleasure. And once again, I admit I was once guilty of like, oh, we got to speak to the pain points. We got to make people feel like they really need this product. But for me personally, what I'm anchoring into with using NLP, even in um, you know marketing or communication is really speaking to the desire, speaking to the vision, speaking to the identity that the person wants to become. Because that's another huge piece of NLP, right? So for those of you who don't know, NLP stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming. Long story short is it's about understanding the language of your subconscious mind to help you create positive behavioral shifts and therefore create the reality that you desire. And so a huge part of NLP, um, one aspect that I really love is called the NLP logical levels. So we speak to how the number one, the, the top level is purpose and spirituality. Purpose and spirituality informs our identity that trickles into values and beliefs and then capabilities and skills and then our behavior and therefore the environment that we're in. So what we see in this space is that a lot of the times people use, you know, whether it's NLP or just other copywriting tactics and things like that, sales strategies to make people feel like their identity is not enough, to make people feel less than, to use language patterns, to invoke fear, to create that experience of fear within people. And for me, what I'm anchoring into is how do we speak to the identity, the true identity of that person in our communication? How do we empower people by their vision, by their desires? Um, so yeah, I think with NLP, there's good to it because when the language patterns are used right, when the techniques are used for a an empowering in an empowering way, it's very powerful in terms of helping people break down limiting beliefs. Like it has helped me so much in understanding how distorted, deleted, and generalized my model of the world has been and just helped me reconstruct what is what I know to be true right now. And of course, as you know, the truth always evolves. Um, so I think that there's a lot of benefit in using NLP in that sense, but I agree with you. I think that overall, like I wouldn't say that NLP is necessarily the issue. I think it's that consciousness shift that needs to happen in the coaching industry, in the self-development industry, where we're overall empowering people. We're getting people to want to invest in themselves out of sovereignty and out of desire and not out of, oh, pain avoidance. And I feel like I have to, or else this person is going to say mean things about me. Hmm. Ain't that the truth? I mean, sovereignty is like always a guiding force here. And uh, I think a lot of those old uh, tactics and uh, strategies of that fear pain point, because I mean, of course, it's important to know like what that trigger is. But to be like harvesting on people's triggers and pains, I think it's part of the old Piscean way of being in that sense as well. And so it's a really good reflection as a leader, as a coach or whatever, of like the areas in your life where there's still work to be done. Because it to me, it feels like a projection. If that's the way that you are selling, if that's the way you're putting out there, that's part of that projection. Yeah. And uh, I mean, the amount of spiritual bypassing that's been going on in the coaching industry and just in like the collective as, as, a, as a whole, it's, uh, it's at times really disheartening. And then you like allow yourself to feel what you're feeling watching it and then showering that person with compassion and just like praying for that soul in a way is the best way of life. Uh, like it's not it's not my responsibility to, to fix them you know what I mean but I can like bless them I guess would be the best way to go with it and I mean it's going to be interesting to see how this industry continues to evolve and um, the biggest thing for me is the importance of that leadership um, clearly there's a lot of shit going on right now and we have such a beautiful blessing and opportunity to move the masses with our medicine all over the world. And we have the ability to really anchor in heaven on earth and implement that real change 
And of course it's going to take work, but the lone wolf days aren't over. Like here, you know, you're in Canada, I'm in California. We're in like two completely different sides of this continent. And like, we're allowing this medicine and these frequencies to be shared to like, you know, the thousands of people who listen to this podcast around the world and even people within, you know, your country, my country, whatever. And so I'm like, it's going to be very interesting to see how we continue to transcend this fear, these narratives, um, these outdated marketing tactics and um, ways of quote unquote running your coaching business. Um, it's going to be really, really interesting to see how sovereignty and integrity and truth really run the show. Yeah, actually, as you were saying that, it's really interesting because what came to mind as you're talking about, you know, like fear and things like that, it's like in the Piscean age, like it just brought me back to all the work that I'm doing now with childhood healing, like trauma healing. And I think that's also going to be a really big piece is that as more and more people actually face their shadows and really go deep into what else needs to be healed within their childhood, within their upbringing, like that's also going to help a lot as well. Cause I'm seeing that for myself, you know, the, the way in which fear has been, um, perpetuated in my life and my being, I can see has played out my entire life. And honestly, now it's been an interesting kind of like identity crumbling, uh, phase that I'm going through of like, who am I without the fear, without the pain avoidance? Um, so I think that's definitely a really big shift that more people are going to experience is facing those parts of themselves in their past that they haven't want to look at. They're like, it's done, it's done. And it's like, it's not. Um, the other thing too, to add to what you were saying um, about leadership is I think that in this space, just like how in the Piscean age, we were so focused on finding the guru, finding the teacher, finding the person to look up to, the person to like follow. And what I think, you know, I'm talking about anchoring in the Aquarian age, especially in the spiritual space and the coaching space is really empowering people to lead themselves and to activate their own truth. Like that is what my work is about. You know, even when clients tell me like, oh, I couldn't have done this without you. I'm like, yes, you could have, but I'm just here as a guide to help you with your process. And I think that's really important going back to sovereignty again is establishing that that leadership that people are looking for, it is cultivated within yourself and you don't need anyone right? Like it's great to have mentors. It's great to have guides along the way, but it's really important for people to understand that they do have what it takes to build a business that is in alignment with them. They don't have to follow someone else's rules or models or whatever, if it's not in alignment. And it's really about building that relationship with yourself um, to express who you are, but also to trust your own intuition and trust your own judgment as you are creating a business or following whatever your mission is. So now I want to dive in deeper and talk about, because I remember like we chatting, you and I chatting for like probably like a year ago, maybe months now about psychedelics. And I remember like you were asking me questions about <laughs> it and stuff. <laughs> I think it was like right after I was on your podcast. You it was like, on my podcast. We were talking yeah. about it on my podcast. I'm like, let me ask her all these questions now. <laughs> yeah. And uh, if you guys want to listen to my episode on Ella's podcast, it's all in the show notes. But uh, I would love to hear how that journey has helped you activate more of your truth and more of your purpose. Because if anyone knows me, they know my passion for plant medicines and psychedelics and how that was a massive, massive tool. Um, it wasn't the end all answer. Cause of course, like you just said, like, I don't need, um, it's like the guru isn't outside of me. I am my own guru. And, uh, you know, but these tools, these medicines that have been passed down from lineages of medicine people and ancestors and healers and mystics. Um, and I even think like Yeshua, definitely did psychedelics as well, but that's a whole other conversation. Uh, but I would love to hear, you know, how you're finding, cause I'm like so curious cause it's just been so <laughs> funny to watch you <laughs> ever since we had that conversation on your podcast. 
So first off, I do have to say, I was going to say this earlier in our chat, but I guess I didn't yet. Thank you, thank you, and thank you for sharing your experience. Like, I'm gonna get emotional talking about this because honestly, like psychedelics have been calling to me for the last two years, but I didn't really know much about it. And so when I heard about you and your story, I was so fascinated, I was so drawn and just hearing your experience, I was like, wow, this is something that I really wanna try out. And you know, it's exactly like what we're saying that in us sharing our journeys, it gives others the permission to embark on theirs. And so, yeah, I had my first psychedelic journey um, this past February, 2020. And it was literally the first experience, the first embodied experience I've ever had with the spiritual realms. And I would say- What medicine was it? It was mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Um, And I would say that it was, oh, I'm like getting all chills and like all the stuff talking about. Uh, I'm here for it. I live for these conversations. So chill away, baby. <laughs> it was the first time, like after that experience, I realized how much my spirituality, like I said, was from the books. I've never had a truly deep, deep spiritual experience for myself until then. And so not to say that the books aren't good. It definitely, you know, planted um, the soil and the foundation for it. But what happened in that journey was wild. Like I did inner child healing. I started like chat, like energy started coming through. I started moving into different mudras and positions. And the one mantra that kept on coming back and I kept on saying this out loud, it was like the entire cosmos is conspiring to help you Hmm. over and over again. The entire cosmos is conspiring to help you. The entire cosmos is conspiring to help you. And for once, it wasn't something that I read in a book. Like I felt it. I could feel the support. I could feel that. And coming out of that, I was just like, oh, actually one other thing that um, came through for me in that journey was like, I, I am from the infinite. I can feel like I could feel the infinite within me. And it was like, my role in this lifetime is not to tell people what to do, but it's to guide others to their own experience of infinity. And back then I was like, what does this mean? Like it really resonates, but what? And over the last year, this is what has been unfolding for me. And honestly, after that journey, so much shifted in my perception around spirituality. That was when I really started to get in my life, you know, like still read my books, but really get into my life and experience the spirituality in my being, really starting to have that deeper connection with source, with God. And since then I've had several other um, journeys. Uh, my other one in April was also extremely profound. Um, that was what really started to bring me to the awareness of the war between the light and the dark. Mm. Um, what came through for me was like, it was a mantra once again, that kept on coming up. It was like, in the beginning, there was light. In the end, there is light. Light always wins. Oh, so so it was beautiful. just like, it was so like, I'm getting like full body chills again, but it was just so beautiful. And back then I was just like, all, like, it's so interesting because it's like, I had my own understanding back then, but like, as the months go by, I'm just like, holy, like, I just reinterpret each of those experiences at such a deeper level. That was also the experience where I had my first ego death, mm. where I mean, there are no words to explain an experience like that, but I will try. It was just like me thinking about my identity, my life, my partner, my problems, my fears, my work, and just feeling them like getting farther and farther away. Like I couldn't feel them anymore. And I kind of felt like my consciousness floating higher and higher up until it was just like, it was just everything. And in that moment, I really had this um, experience of how how short life can be and how this is really a temporary experience, you know, like when we leave this planet, that is what we go back to. Um, And so that was really helpful for me in terms of putting things into perspective. I kind of see it as like a zooming out of the bigger picture and really got me to start taking more action in areas where I was afraid. Um, The other thing too, was I remember just like, um, this was done in my bed and I had an eye mask on and I was just like, oh my god none of this is real (laughs) it's like (laughs) i was like i was laughing at first and then i started crying because i was like wait what none of this is real (laughs) it was really really such a great experience and then um one of my 
other really profound journeys that honestly has since shifted my business and it's 444 by the way I just looked at my clock hell yeah um, <laughs> uh, it was in July where I had my first real like deep kundalini activation because up until that point I've been doing kundalini yoga for uh, nearly two years and you know I've been feeling all the positive benefits of the practice but I haven't really felt the energy as much and so on that mushroom journey I it was so funny because it's like logically consciously I couldn't have known what it was but it was like I said it out loud I was like my kundalini is activating and I've never felt so much energy it was just cosmic energy coming through me and that was where I had an experience of truth like once mm. truth what runs through your body it changes your entire being it changed the way that I look it changes the way that I speak it changes my energy it changes just everything and yeah like it was so hard for me to explain that to people um but I realized that I'm not meant to explain it I'm meant to show it through my being and since then you know a couple of days after that journey um I channeled through like my new methodology or my new mission or way of running my business is that I'm here to activate truth in people I'm here to show people how to experience embody and express their truth and to the to the point of like the two journeys ago, it's guiding people to their own experience of infinity, which is their truth. I'm not here to tell you what that looks like. I'm not here to tell you exactly how to do it, but I'm here to guide you in the best way that I can based on my experience. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about some of the journeys. It's so, so good. <laughs> I love it. I mean, definitely. That's why I've been such a proponent too about psychedelics because you know, and in my upcoming book, I'm talking all about like the challenging experiences and the beautiful ones. Yeah. Um, because when you were talking about how you saw the the fight between the light and the dark, I saw that same shit when I did the first time I did LSD in April um, yeah. back in 2012. And I was seeing the infiltrations coming through and it was tough. Three months later, I got struck by lightning. And so it was it's. Um, it's challenging when you see those things, you know, and uh, especially when you don't know who you are, you know, um, that can be part of the challenges of psychedelics is that if you don't know how to protect your energy, if you're not doing it in a safe set and setting, like I literally have in my whole book, like when I talk about diving into my, my LSD experience of my, that really difficult trip that had me see everything. I have a whole section in my book that's like, all right, so let's talk about set and setting because mm -hmm. elements like that are still really important to, to speak up about. Um, and I feel like if I, I have a responsibility in that sense, um, if I'm here to be a medicine priestess and, you know, educate people about these things, that's a component that's also very interesting and having that support and making sure like who you're with while you're embarking on these journeys, especially if you're just starting. Um, yeah. I mean, I've of course like sat in ceremony by myself plenty of times, but I consider myself more of like an advanced soul now that I've been working with this medicine for over nine years in these different, mm -hmm. you know, I've sat in ayahuasca ceremonies. I've sat in peyote ceremonies. Like I've done like, I've done it, you know, I've done watching with San Pedro, like I've, I've done it. And so, it's just, it's important to be conscious of these. And like, if you're listening and you're like, oh my God, I know Sabrina's talked about this in the past. I'm hearing Ella's experience. I want to dive in like with what's going on in the world right now too. Like I have, I have a civil responsibility to say, be discerning um, because there is a spiritual war happening right now as well. And I do see that a lot of these uh, darker forces are infiltrating psychedelic journeys right now. Um, if you don't know how to protect, again, your energy, and there can't, and that's it all comes down to that discernment of like, when I when I ate that LSD, I was pissed, I was angry, I wasn't in the right mindset, and I had a fucking difficult trip. So if you're taking these medicines right now to escape, uh, you're gonna find yourself in a more challenging place than where you were before you embarked on the journey. Um, and so I just wanted to like share that disclaimer because 
it's it's the type of leader I choose to be in that sovereignty. I want you to be sovereign and like take what resonates and release the rest, of course, and to become aware of what's going on right now as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's really important. Like even before I go in, it's very clear on intention, setting up the space, making sure it's safe, like staging, calling in support and all that kind of stuff. It's really important to not just jump into it um, Mm -hmm. without preparing well before. Well, especially with like we were talking about before, there's so much of the false light in the spiritual community that's been going around. And and if you're still um, subscribing to a lot of those teachings and stuff too, you know, you're going to have an experience where you're going to learn a lesson or you can take with this conversation right now. And maybe this hopefully pray like, you know, can ignite within you that that gift of discernment and that blessing in that sense, just because, like I said, I mean, especially right now, like beginning the year and after coming out of 2020, it's really, really interesting right now um, to see what's gone and how can we like really pave the path for like a really healthy 2020 wonderful. And my friend told me that I was like, oh my God, it's so beautiful. (laughs) I love it. Isn't that adorable? I know. And so I don't want you to be fearful. Like we're talking about, like, I don't want you to be fearful of like me sharing this with you all, but I'm, I'm sharing this with you out of love and compassion and as through experience, you know? And I think that's what this whole conversation has been is like the importance of sharing your truth and your medicine through experience and like Mm -hmm. being able to reflect on how far you've come and to be able to lead from that space. Yeah. I think that's just, it's the name of the game of what's going to allow us to help you embody your truth, um, to anchor in truth as our reality, to be able to serve from that space of integrity and uh, for you to show up here feeling sovereign in who you are. And so to wrap up, I love you. And this has been so sweet and special for me, truly. Um, I want to do a lightning round questions. And I want to ask you, what does sovereignty mean to you? Sovereignty means to me standing in my own power, having a high degree of discernment for what is true for me and acting on it. Amazing. Where do you see 2021 in terms of leadership? 2021 in terms of leadership, like we've talked about, I think 2021 in terms of leadership is really about self-leadership. It's about leading yourself in your truth. It's about stepping forth in ways that have felt uncomfortable before, putting yourself out there and paving the way for others. Beautiful. What animal totem has been really supporting you and guiding you lately? Hmm. I actually don't really know this one. The only one I can think about is my cat. (laughs) I love that. (laughs) I think that's great. You just see her right now. She's just like sprawled out next to me like. Dude, you don't need to tell me. (laughs) Bud is with me everywhere. I get it. But you know what? Cats, cats carry a lot of that independence, right? Yeah. And to be sovereignty and independence go hand in hand. So yeah. maybe that's why your cat's coming up <laughs> and I'm here for it. What would you say to younger Ella? Mm. Sorry, I just got like really emotional there for a second. I actually have a photo of her here. So you can oh, see. I love I'm that. spending a lot of time with her. Um, very simple. Thank you for being you. Thank Aww. you for continuing on and thank you for just seeing who you are. I love that. And where can we find more of you? Ooh, come find me on Instagram at PSMLA. I'm also hopping back more on YouTube. So you can find me also at PSMLA on YouTube. Um, on Facebook, you can join my Facebook group, The Truth Alchemy Collective. Um, so that's also something new. I'm not sure if I told you, but I ended up closing my past Facebook group out of truth alignment, no longer a badass light worker as much as I have loved that phase of my life. 
Um, but yeah, really anchoring into the fact that I'm a truth alchemist. I'm a truth embodiment guide. So you can find me over in the Truth Alchemy Collective. Hell yeah. And what last little nugget of wisdom would you love to share? You came here on this planet during this time, knowing what you know with what you have experienced for a very important purpose. Allow yourself to tune in, allow yourself to really ask yourself what is true for me right now and just simply follow that. The answer that you are looking for outside of you, the people that you're looking to follow and to get the answers from, that's not where your truth lies. Your truth lies within. And when you allow yourself to experience your truth and allow that to guide you, you will go to exactly where you need to be. Hell yeah. Hell, hell yeah. Hell yeah, Ella. <laughs> well, I love hell yeah. I haven't heard of that until your post yesterday, but I'm going to use that. <laughs> I don't like calling it's like hell no or a hell yeah, right? Hell so yeah. that's what we got to run with. But I appreciate you, Ella. Thank you for being here and for being just so open and transparent with me. And, uh, I'm, I feel like I was telling her earlier, we, we, we jumped on like just to ch catch up before we recorded. And I just feel like this one's like my, like, like a little sister. <laughs> and so I'm always, always <laughs> blasting her with like love when I see her stories and stuff. And this is a special one. And she's like barely scratched the surface of like what's possible for her. So I'm just excited to continue to bear witness to that all. And uh, go make sure you check it out. And again, if you want to listen to our conversation, now that you listen to this one, go check out the show notes below and uh, we'll get you into that conversation as well. But thanks again, Ella, for being here. And thank you all for tuning in. And I know I'm saying this for Ella too, but we love you and just yeah. stay in your truth, stay in your sovereignty and just remember that the world is ready for your medicine and we'll be here to support you and we love you. Take care. <laughs>